Everyone that loves a good burger knows that there aren't any shortages of restaurants to get the popularly loved meal from. There are many places to get a good burger, but where do you go for a great burger? In 1948, two lovebirds answered this question by opening a fast food restaurant that was more concerned with the quality of their burgers and customer service than with how much money they made. They made sure each of their burgers were made with high quality, fresh ingredients, rather than low quality cheap ones. They started with a small drive through that could barely hold the two of them. Instead of opting to expand rapidly at the risk of losing the quality of their burgers, they chose to grow slowly, giving up the extra money they could have made as long as they could keep the business within the family and maintain the standard in their food and customer service. Now, they are a popular fast food chain worth over a billion dollars and are loved for the quality that they serve. It all started with two young, ambitious people and a love story. This is the story of In-N-Out Burger. Welcome to Planet Biz. The Young Lovers Esther Lavelle Johnson, who would eventually become Esther Lavelle Snyder, was born on January 7, 1920 in Sorrento, Illinois. She was one of the eight children in her family. She attended Greenville College in Illinois and during the war, she joined the Waves, which was a woman's branch of the United States Navy during World War II. In her time as a Navy Wave, she served as a surgical nurse and by the time she left the military, she had the rank of pharmacist first class. After the war ended, she attended Seattle Pacific University in Washington, where she graduated with a bachelor's degree in zoology. Young, smart, a military veteran, and a recent college graduate, Esther then began work as a day manager of a restaurant in Fort Lawton in Seattle. It was her job in this restaurant where she met Harry Snyder, who would soon become her husband. Harry was born on the 9th of September, 1913, to parents Hendrik Schneider and Mary Drode in Vancouver, Canada. He attended Venice High School in Los Angeles, after which he served in World War II. Apart from being a military veteran, Harry was also a veteran in the food service industry, which he had spent much of his life working in. Sometime in 1947, he went to deliver some baked goods to a restaurant in Fort Lawton. At this restaurant, he met his sweetheart, Esther Johnson. The First in and out Burger In 1948, the year after Esther and Harry met, they got married and moved to Baldwin Park, Southern California. Baldwin Park was a rural town in San Gabriel Valley, California. It was a lively place, which was soon to become iconic for being the location of the first In-N-Out Burger. Henry Snyder was the one who came up with the idea of an In-N-Out restaurant. He believed that because modern Americans were busy, what they needed was a place where they could quickly pick up a meal and go. His wife, Esther, supported him completely. She would later say of her husband, Anything he decided to do usually turned out well because he would work quite hard. He was a person who, if you gave him a job and it was difficult, he would figure it out and not let go until he knew it well. And so, on the 22nd of October, 1948, the first In-N-Out Burger was opened. It was located across the street from Francis Guido Avenue where Mr. Snyder had grown up and was a simple stand that occupied a small area barely 10 square feet. The restaurant had a simple menu, which featured burgers, french fries, and cold soft drinks. Harry's innovative spirit drove him to create a two-way speaker box, which he placed in front of the stand for people to make drive through orders. This two-way speaker was believed to be the first automatic ordering system used in a drive through restaurant. And this first in and out burger was known as the first drive through in the entire state of California. Neither one of the couple had much experience in sales or customer service, but their stand was a success. They sold 47 burgers on their first day and an estimated 2,000 burgers during their first month. At first, Esther and Harry were the only two employees. Harry cooked the meals and Esther kept the books. Harry was committed to giving his customers the best quality food. He would carefully select the meat himself before buying it and watch them cut it up to make sure that it was done properly. He made sure the ingredients were all fresh and that the environment was clean. Esther helped out with the cooking as well. She peeled onions, molded hamburger patties, and peeled potatoes. Since then, In-N-Out Burger has stuck with their tradition of hand-torn lettuce, freshly baked buns, hand-cut french fries made from California-grown potatoes, and a simple menu. 
The Young Lovers opened up their second location in Covina, California in 1951. But it wasn't just their business that was growing, their family was too. That same year, they had their first son, Harry Guy Schneider, who was commonly known simply as Guy. A year later, they had their second son, Richard Schneider, who was known as Rich. Keeping it within the family. The Snyders refused to sell franchises or buy anything on credit. So as to be expected, the growth of In-N-Out was slow, but it was steady. While other burger places that opened up around the same time as In-N-Out, such as McDonald's, Carl's Jr., and Jack in the Box expanded rapidly, the Snyders loved their slow growth. It was important for them to keep things within the family and to foster loyalty between themselves and their employees. So they stuck with their decision to remain a family business. The family kept their lives very low-key. They shied away from publicity, hardly ever gave interviews, and never released financial information about their restaurant business. Their children helped out in the family restaurants and eventually, the Snyder family relocated out of Baldwin Park to another city that was still in California, named San Dimas. But they remained involved in the Baldwin community. The fast food chain kept getting longer and longer, slowly but surely. Things were looking good for the business and by 1976, they had 18 restaurants. Sadly, tragedy struck in the family. In 1976, Harry Snyder died of lung cancer. As the patriarch of the Snyder family and the In-N-Out family, Harry's death left a gaping hole. While his position as father and husband in the Snyder family couldn't be filled, Harry could be replaced in the In-N-Out business. One of their two Snyder boys was to be chosen as the heir. Even though the question of which one of the Snyder children would take the place of their father had an obvious answer, it was a tricky situation. The oldest son, Guy, who may naturally have been the first choice as the heir, was the wild child. He was more involved in racing than he was in the family business. Also, he was struggling with a drug addiction. His younger brother Rich, on the other hand, had been actively involved with the business. He would help out in doing the books while he was still 17 years old. He was the friendly, stable, corporate one, and he was evidently the best option to take over from his father. So, at the age of 24, Rich became the president of In-N-Out and his mother, Esther, who still had possession of the controlling share of the business, was the secretary treasurer. And of course, because he couldn't be left out of the picture, Guy was given the title of executive vice president. Another tragedy. Rich did a fantastic job in running the company. He was focused and knew exactly what he wanted to accomplish, and he did just that while upholding his parents' ethical and religious values. He was a Christian, just like his parents, and he was the one who came up with the idea of printing Bible verses on the packages of the restaurant's food. Customer service remained a priority in In-N-Out Burgers, and through creating customized experiences for their customers, they developed a not-so-secret menu which includes customer favorites like double meat and 4x4 burgers. In 1992, under Rich's leadership, In-N-Out celebrated the opening of their 80th location in Las Vegas. The company was thriving under the watchful and caring Rich Snyder. The sky was the limit for this family business that the Snyders had decided to run in their own unique way. Then, on December 15, 1993, one year after the celebration of their 80th location, tragedy struck again. Newly married Rich Snyder died at the age of 41. His private plane crashed while he was trying to land in John Wayne Airport, California, killing him and four other people. Just a day before the plane crash, Rich had been in Northern California because his niece, Lindsay, who was 10 years old at the time, was performing in a pageant. During this pageant, he talked with his brother Guy for the first time in many years. The two of them had not been on speaking terms, but that day, he tried to make things right with his brother, telling him, We might not see each other again. You're my brother and I love you. As if speaking prophetically, his plane crashed the next day and killed him. Rich's death was devastating. It was particularly hard on his mother, who said, When Rich was killed, my world had ended almost. I never had to worry about anything as long as he was here. He was a happy soul. Guy and his daughter were the only heirs to the family business left. Esther became president and Guy, who was still struggling with addiction, was named chairman of the board. Guy's tenure was going to be a very short one. In 1999, he died of an accidental overdose of a painkiller. 
Esther had lost both of her children but remained active in the family business. As she grew older and frailer, she still remained involved in the running of the company and in making decisions. At the age of 24, Lindsay was left in charge of the company. It's been over 70 years since In-N-Out was founded by the ambitious and innovative Harry Snyder. The company had a lot of downs, but now it still stands strong. They now have 358 locations in five states in the USA and make an estimated $575 million in revenue every year. They are still a family-owned business, holding tightly to their original values of high-quality food, made the old-fashioned way, prepared and served in a clean environment by a close-knit family of employees. For more inspiring business stories, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. This is Planet Biz.